Today we're going to be introducing the topic of matter. Matter is anything that has mass or takes up space. So in this picture, everything that you see is a type of matter. The bear is a type of matter, right? He takes up space, he has mass. The ice is matter, the water is matter, even the air is matter because it, even though we can't see it, it still takes up space. If we were to force that air into a balloon, we can see the space that the air takes up. So the smallest unit of matter is called an atom. Smallest unit of matter. And I mean unbelievably small, unthinkably small. If you think about a piece of hair, a single strand of hair, let's pretend I'm drawing a piece of hair here. The diameter of cross, and hair is mostly made of carbon atoms, most living things are mostly made of carbon atoms. So if we talk about the diameter of a hair, and I'm not talking the length of the hair, no, I'm talking about the diameter of the hair, is about one million carbon atoms. One million for a single strand of hair. That's how unbelievably small an atom is. I can't even think that small. Blows my mind. But anyways, when we're talking about atoms, atoms consist of three subatomic particles. So we've got protons, which are seen, draw a little arrow here, here in the center of the atom. So the center of the atom is usually referred to as the nucleus nucleus of the atom because it's in the middle. So that middle part, the nucleus, is composed of the protons, which are seen in teal with the plus signs, and neutrons, which are shown here in purple. Those two make up the nucleus. And then buzzing around those, that nucleus, we have electrons. And these are constantly in motion going around and around and around and around the nucleus. Here we have a much more realistic picture of what an electron looks like. So we still have our protons and neutrons in the center, the nucleus of the atom. And then around those, we have what's called the electron cloud, or the electron orbital. Orbital. So this is where we are likely to find the electron, but because they're moving so super duper fast, like I said, and maybe they're coming close, maybe they're far away, we're never exactly sure of where the electrons are at a particular point in time. So we draw an electron cloud to show where they're probably likely to be, but we don't necessarily know exactly where they are. So the protons in the nucleus have a positive charge. That's why they're shown with a plus sign. Neutrons, on the other hand, the ones seen in purple here, have no charge at all. So they're electrically neutral. That's why they're called neutrons. They're neutral, no charge. And then maybe you can think protons have a positive charge. They start with a P. So you can remember P for proton for positive. The electrons of the atom have a negative charge, so that's why they have the negative sign here. A negative charge, and they are much, much, much smaller. This image is by no means drawn to scale. The electrons are so much smaller than protons and neutrons, you wouldn't even be able to see them if this was the size of the atom. It just helps as a good visual. So an atom in its regular normal state will always be electrically neutral because they have the same number of protons as they do electrons. So if we see here, this again, this is a carbon atom. Carbon atom. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six protons in the center, one, two, three, 
four, five, six electrons on the outside. So the six positives and the six negatives balance each other out so they're electrically neutral. So when we think about an element, an element is a pure substance that only has one type of atom inside. So if you see here, this is a picture of what mercury looks like in its pure form. So mercury is abbreviated with the symbol HG here. And then we've got a picture of what it looks like. So it's silvery, it's usually some type of liquid, and this would be only made of mercury atoms. So hopefully this is a familiar image. This is the periodic table of elements where we have over a hundred different elements. Um, not all of them are we going to get into in biology class. The ones we'll be referring to the most are the ones that living things are made out of or living things need. So things like carbon. All living things are made out of carbon. If you ever have seen a sci-fi movie where the aliens are looking for carbon-based life forms, on Earth, everything that's living contains carbon. So that's why we're carbon-based life forms. We also are going to deal with nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. All these elements are abundant in living things. Now if we zoom in on a particular element, so let's look at carbon since that's one we've already been using as an example, we can see this little six up here. And that six is the atomic, atomic number. And what that means is that carbon atoms will always have six protons. So the atomic number equals the number of protons. Number of protons. So we know just by looking at the periodic table that carbon has an atomic number of six, always going to have six protons. New nitrogen is always going to have seven protons because the atomic number is seven. Oxygen, same thing, eight. Atomic number is eight. And then the atomic symbol would be the letter. So oxygen, the symbol is O. Nitrogen, N. Carbon, C. Aluminum, Al. So some of them do have two letters. Silicon, phosphorus. So that letter, that symbol, symbolizes that element. And then if we look at the bottom number here, at the bottom, of the element. This is called the atomic mass. Atomic mass. So if let's say we're talking about phosphorus, we'll use this as an example since I circled it, has 15 protons because the atomic number is 15. So, so we know that an element in its natural state is going to have the same number of neutrons and protons. So if it has 15 protons and 15 neutrons, 15 plus 15 makes 30. And if you could see down here, oops, the atomic mass is 30.973 something something. So what that means is sometimes an element can have what's called an isotope. It means it has a different number of neutrons. Normally it has the same number of protons and neutrons, but once in a while there are different numbers of neutrons. So this number takes into consideration all the average of all of the phosphorus atoms on Earth. So the average mass of that would be a little over 30. The weight of the electrons is never considered because those are so super duper duper tiny you'd have to put thousands of them together even to just make up one single proton so that is all for today if you have any questions about anything from the video either rewind and watch it again or feel free to bring your questions to class we'll be going over this material for the rest of the week okay have a lovely evening